Now I'm very pleased to introduce our commencement keynote speaker, Mr. Robert Brown. Robert serves as Director of Environmental Engineering at Ford Motor Company. Mr. Brown has had a distinguished career at Ford Company and elsewhere. He joined Ford Company in 1979 and he has led many programs, initiatives in environmental and safety regulations, safety and compliance. In addition, he is a member of the Board of Directors of the Coordinating Research Council and Engine Manufacturers Associations. He earned his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering at the University of Michigan. We are not going to hold that against him. And his master's of science in engineering management at Wayne State University. Mr. Brown is no stranger to our college and its mission. He has been a member of Board of Advisors for College of Engineering Center for Environmental Research and Technology, known as CSERT, for about eight years. Indeed, we are most appreciative of his support of not only our college, CSERT, but our students. Please join me in welcoming Robert D. Brown. Thank you, Dean. Good evening, Chancellor White, Executive Vice Chancellor and Provost Rabenstein, Dean Abashian, faculty of the Bournes College of Engineering, alumni, parents, family, friends, the community of Riverside, and most of all, the class of 2010. Congratulations to the graduates, and thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. You know, I really enjoy commencement activities. I enjoy sharing a day like this with the faculty and administrators of the college who have worked so hard to bring you, the graduates, to this point in time. After a parent or grandparent, no one shapes our lives, your lives, for the better more than our teachers do. They have profoundly changed you during the years you have been here. These wonderful faculty members and administrators deserve your genuine and generous gratitude. Please, for your leaders. And of course, all the family members who are here. I know the pride you parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles, and other family members feel. I know the joy that is in your hearts today and I also know the relief your, your checkbooks are now starting to feel because I have been there myself. My wife Geraldine and I have two children and we sent them both to college, paying private school tuition for one and in-state tuition for the other. In addition, we sat through commencement exercises as proud as can be, just as many of you are today. So graduates, this is your day but it also belongs to your parents. It belongs to your family members. It belongs to all those who gave you love and support, and you owe them a heartfelt thank you as well, please. Yes, this is a happy day, a great day for all of us. In a few minutes, you will leave this institution and the shelter of your family to strike out on your own. UCR has prepared you with a quality education, a treasure that will always be yours. It can never be lost. You have been taught to work for goals that transcend the individual. As engineers, you have also been trained to acquire and apply technical, scientific, and mathematical knowledge to design and implement materials, structures, machines, devices, systems and processes that safely realize a desired objective and that improve the quality of life. I ask that you use a significant portion of your time and talent that you have 
and the treasure that you will surely accumulate to serve others. Give back and you will find that you will receive back in many measures. Your parents and family have also given you an education, but of a different and perhaps even more important kind. From them, you have learned the understanding of who you are, what you are, where you came from, your roots. You have learned the value of self and of self-worth. But above all, I believe the greatest things you learn from your family and your community are trustworthiness, respect, responsibility, fairness, caring, and citizenship. These six pillars all come together as the gift of character and form the foundation for ethical decision making. For just a few minutes, I want to share with you my take on these six pillars that served me well in overcoming the burden and insecurity I felt as the first in my family to obtain a college degree and later helped me to achieve an executive position at Ford Motor Company. First, trustworthiness. When others trust us, they give us greater leeway because they feel we do not need monitoring to assure that we will meet our obligations. They believe in us and hold us in higher esteem. That is satisfying. At the same time, we must constantly live up to the expectation of others and refrain from self-serving behavior that can quickly destroy our relationships. Simply reframing from deception is not enough, however. Trustworthiness is the most complicated of the six pillars and concerns a variety of qualities like honesty, integrity, reliability, and loyalty. Second, respect. People are not things, and everyone has a right to be treated with dignity. We certainly have no ethical duty to hold all people in high esteem, but we should treat everyone with respect, regardless of who they are and what they have done. We have a responsibility to be the best we can be in all situations, even when dealing with unpleasant people. Third, responsibility. Life is full of choices. Being responsible means being in charge of our choices and thus our lives. It means being accountable for what we do and who we are. It also means recognizing that our actions matter and we are morally on the hook for the consequences. Our capacity to reason and our freedom to choose make us morally autonomous and therefore answerable for whether we honor or degrade the ethical principles that give life meaning and purpose. Ethical people show responsibility by being accountable, pursuing excellence, and exercising self-restraint. They exhibit the ability to respond to expectations. Fourth, fairness. What is fairness? Most would agree it involves issues of equality, impartiality, proportionality, openness, and due process. Most would agree that it is unfair to handle similar matters inconsistently. Most would agree that it is unfair to impose punishment that is not commensurate with the offense. The basic concept seems simple, even intuitive, yet applying it in daily life can be surprisingly difficult. Fairness is another tricky concept, probably more subject to legitimate debate and interpretation than any other ethical value. Disagreeing parties tend to maintain that there is only one fair position, their own of course, but essentially fairness implies adherence to a balanced standard of justice without relevance to one's own feelings or inclinations. Fifth, caring. If you existed alone in the universe, there would be no need for character ethics and your heart could be a cold, hard stone. Caring is the heart of character and ethical decision making. It is scarcely possible to be truly ethical and yet unconcerned with the welfare of others. That is because ethics is ultimately about good relationships with other people. Someone once said it is easier to love humanity than to love people. 
People who consider themselves ethical and yet lack a caring attitude toward individuals tend to treat others as instruments of their will. They rarely feel an obligation to be honest, loyal, fair, or respectful, except insofar as it is prudent for them to do so, a disposition which in itself hints at duplicity and a lack of integrity. A person who really cares feels an emotional response to both the pain and pleasure of others. Of course, sometimes we must hurt others we truly care for. Some decisions, while quite ethical, do cause pain. However, one should con consciously cause no more harm than is reasonably necessary to perform one's duties. Six, citizenship. Citizenship includes civic virtues and duties that prescribe how we ought to behave as part of a community. The good citizen knows the laws and obeys them, yes, but that is not all. They volunteer and stay informed on the issues of the day, the better to execute their duties and privileges as a member of a self-governing democratic society. They do more than their fair share to make society work now and for future generations. Such a commitment to the public sphere can have more, many expressions, such as conserving resources, recycling, and reducing waste. The good citizen gives more than they take. So as you leave here today with competence and character, a powerful combination, the competence that you acquired from your education, the character that you inherited from your parents and your family, your community and your places of worship, this powerful combination will keep you doing the right thing as you go forward in life. Use them to be successful and to prosper. Use them to do well and to do good. I again congratulate you on this wonderful day. I ask that you use a significant portion of your time and talent that you have and that and the treasures that you will surely accumulate to serve others. I ask you to go forth from this place inspired by all those who have gone before you. Go forth with the love of your family, the blessings of your teachers, and the respect of your peers. Go forth in the certain knowledge that all you will eventually leave behind are your good name, your good works, and the blessings of your children. Graduates, your only limitations are your dreams. So dream well and dream large. And always remember, it is the content and quality of your character that ultimately defines who you are. Thank you.